We're live. All right. Hey, uh, everybody. We're live. Hey, here we, here we go. Good morning. So, good morning. I'm Chris. Uh, it's my Derek. brother, Derek. Uh, we are Beer About It. Uh, so, first episode we've done. We've been open here at the Growler Cafe in Lebanon for about two and a half years now, and um, what we found is a lot of our customers are really kind of craving some beer knowledge, right? There's like this lingo about it, um, you know, beginning, middle, and end of how beers taste, different kinds of beers, and so we just thought we'd kind of put a weekly show together and uh, sort of address some of those things, give you guys some, uh, some information. Um, yeah, my brother and I have our... Tavor here. We were both members at Tavor, and uh, we've collected lots and lots of bottles. Too many bottles. Yeah, <laughs> I, have a gr- I have a garage full of bottles at my house, and uh, my brother does as well. So this first episode, uh, we just sort of picked a couple bottles out. Um, there's another local brewery that we're going to be kind of plugged into here that we are going to be pouring a little bit later. And sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, Amazon was delivered today. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I don't know, uh, Derek. Have anything to, to? No, I just we're excited to share some stuff with you guys. If it's if it's beer related, we'll be talking about it. Um, this is obviously the first one. We'll be working through some kinks, obviously, as we go through. But yeah, we're excited to talk about it. Uh, definitely comment if you guys have any things to say or any any things to to mention as we go through this. Any questions we can answer for you guys uh, towards the end? Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, and thanks for being here. So let's. Yeah, go. Uh, I see several guys. Mike, call. What's up, uh, Tony? I see you up there. Uh, if you guys want to comment, like, uh, heart, share, thumbs up, we can see all that stuff. So we appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think we can just get started on some beers now. I'm gonna let for sure I'm start that. One. Yeah. So the first beer today, temporary permanence. This is an urban family beer. Um, this is something, this is one of the beers that we scored through Tavur, of course. Uh, it's a Brett fermented, um, dry hopped, for, for, basically a farmhouse beer. So we're going to crack this little baby open and tell you what we think about this guy. Hey, Heather. Nice color. I'll take that one. Good color. A little bit hazy, right? Yeah. Cheers. First beer? Cheers. Yeah. 10.30, huh? Beer at yeah. 10.30. Biscuity? Yeasty. Super yeasty. Super yeasty. Kind of bright. A little bit of lemon. So this beer... This was a, the first fodder beer that Urban Family did. Fodder is basically uh, an oak fermenter um, that they use to do a lot of these um, Brett beers. Um, Brett re- re- talks about the yeast strains they use. Brett is basically a yeast that doesn't grow a spore. So a lot of us uh, recognize yeast as growing basically like spores on the top of the beer. With Brett, it doesn't do that, which allows them to age it for longer periods of time and whatnot. So this is a Brett yeast. It's uh, creamy, clean, right? It's one month in French oak. So that little dryness on the back is where you get. It's smooth, right? I don't know, like lager drinkers would be into this. Yeah. Uh, you know, light, clean, summer. I think of spring probably a little bit here. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, yeah, delicious def- beer. It definitely is fermented in the bottle a little bit. You get a little bit of that, like, um, that little bit of that champagne bubbliness mm. in it, a little more than you would in a traditional just totally. CO2 beer. Cool. Also, uh, it's 10.30 in the morning on a Saturday, and we're going to be trying five beers here. So uh, if any of our buddies are around right now and you guys want to come and taste some of these beers, uh, come on down. We'll be, we'll be on for a little while here. Uh, Chrissy, hey, how's it going? Nina, good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Cool. Let's see our next one. I need a bottle over. Is, uh, this one's from... Uh, surf Brewing, they're out of California. Uh, it's uh, the scientific series, so I guess these guys have always been super excited about, um, you know, doing sour beers. Uh, they started doing some sour beers in their brew house and decided that, you know, in taking some of those yeasts and doing them with these clean flagship beers is not always a good idea because uh, it can kind of infect your other beers from what I understand. So they actually took it off, they did a couple of them, and then they took it off site, now they have their own thing going on. So. Uh, this one is 
It's called CO2. It's a blonde ale. It's aged in French oak rosé barrels. Um, it's got a really tight cork on it. <laughs> uh, it's dried hop with uh, Nelson Sauvigne, which is a, a fruity, uh, almost has a Sauvignon grape sort of flavor to it. Uh, crushed grapes is what they say to get out of this. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about trying this. Uh, it's been aged in uh, French oak for, I don't know. Uh, hey, Jeremy, Ashley, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Kind of the same color almost, huh? This last one? Yeah. Here, I'll show this bottle to you too. So little, you guys can kind of see it. Kind of hazy, can't quite see through it. Kind of juicy looking. So, let's see, can you see that? There's oh. the bottle. Oh my gosh, you totally get the wine. I went and read, I read up on all these, all of these sour beers and are, are sound amazing. So anyway, cheers, huh? Oh, oh dude. dude. Woo! Spicy, right? Definitely. You get the grapes. That, which yeah. they, that's just the hop. So when they dry hop something, um, it's basically, they just strain it at the end, right? They boil it, uh, and then when it comes out of the boil, it gets cooled and goes into the bright tank, uh, where it sort of finishes out. Um, in between that process, uh, they take certain hop bridles and they sort of just strain it through there. Um, and so that's where you get a lot of the aromas and everything from these hops. You don't get it so much in the palate, but it's really, really strong on the nose. So you can really smell some of that stuff here. This is whiny. Definitely pick up the rosé, which is crazy. As you guys know, I mean, rosés are super light. Skins don't stay on long, so the barrels tend to be a little bit lighter um, in the sense for aging. But you can really pick up the wine in this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's citrusy, right? I get a lot of citrus. Oh my gosh, it's lemon peel, big time. Lemony at the end. Again, another summer, spring, yeah. bright. I mean, I would, I don't know. I'd drink Pepper, I get like white pepper on the back, a little bit of spice there. Oh yeah, definitely. Anyway, dude, good this stuff. Is Pick it up. Like I said, some of these stuff, you're not gonna be able to get some of these things around here. You can start opening the other bottle. Yeah. Um, you're not gonna be able to get some of this stuff around here. So if you guys are looking for like an awesome collection, uh, check out Tavor. Uh, it's super good, they have an app. Uh, it's a little bit, it gets a lot of hand. I'll say that right now. Uh, uh, he deleted it off of his phone because uh, <laughs> he got a little crazy. Uh, yeah. So you end up with these big boxes. But here's what it is. You, you get an email uh, every day or, or a notification every day, two of them. You decide, yes, I want it, or no, I don't want it. Um, I've sort of limited mine down to sours lately because there's just so many great beers out there that these guys offer. So if you're looking at that, uh, I guess a quick plug here. Check them out. Um, yeah, so next beer. Next beer. Gentleman Caller. This is another Urban Family beer. So Urban Family, I didn't tell you guys before this, Urban Family is from, hey, from Seattle. Hey, what's up? Um, which happens to be our home. That's uh, where we grew up. So these guys are from, Sour, or from uh, Seattle. They're, we reached out to them and talked to them. They're, this is their wheelhouse. This is a dry hop sour, um, part of a three, uh, three series family of sours that they did when they first opened up. Um, so we're going to try this out. It's got Belma, Simcoe, and Whole Melon hops in it. Whole Melon. So we had, we had a beer in here. It was a single hop series with Whole Melon. It's supposed to be really fruity, uh, honeydew melon. They get out of it. It's a little bit darker malt. In Thanks for the feedback, guys. Don <laughs> Schumer, what's up, buddy? Big Schum. Check out the color on that. It's got an ambery. Yeah. What kind of beer is this in? This little... is a dry hopped sour. Oh, dude. Love sours. Yeah, for you sour fans, as you know, either love them or hate them, or you're working your way into them. Um, but sours are, are great; they're one of our favorites for sure. We have a handle here all the time, number seventeen. So, I've got so many sours still sitting here waiting to go on. Wow, good. This is delicious. I, you know, the very, very the hot the hot balance on the backside allows for it to not be super overly sour, which some sours can be. It's clean. It is super clean. Not overly carbonated, which is kind of nice. It allows for the flavors to come through a little yeah, bit. I a big head there. I don't know. I get, I get like dried apricots out of this, right? Dude, this is like a Granny Smith apple. Oh like yeah, there's some Granny Smith apple, apple there. there. Pretty acidic. Uh, doesn't. How long was it? Was it barrel aged? Um, it was barrel aged actually. It was, let's see how long we have barrel aged for. Three months. Three months and yeah. ten choke. I can probably sit in there a little bit longer. I like the oaky flavor in mine. It sort of mellows things out a little bit, helps things blend a little bit better. But 
to my understanding, I was talking to them too. They're, they're trying out Casey, like, how do you know? They're trying out three different types of yeast with this, so it's got a blend and a variety of yeast that went into this. So um, you know, as they kind of test through things, I think things will change. This bottle pot might even be different next year. Who knows? But that's what I love about sours. You know, they're all sorts of different barrel aged and wine and all sorts of gin and crazy. So they definitely have lots of complexities. You get lots of middle, uh, like middle, beginning, and different flavors there, like a wine. It's kind of dry. Yeah. The oak kind of came yeah. through. Yeah. All right. Room. Next one. Try to keep. Well, this is called convenient distraction. I'll need a bottle opener here. Yeah. It's an imperial porter. Now, I'm not a big dark beer fan. My brother's really not either. But uh, there's some really, really good ones out there. I know that it's dark beer season right now, so we wanted to throw one of these in there. Show them the label. Um, yeah, convenient distraction. It's from Oso Brewing. Um, they're out of Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Hope I'm getting that right. I did a little bit. Oh yeah, Wisconsin. Plover, Wisconsin. Uh, you know, this is a. a a guy and his wife, right? They they went to school. Uh, they started. They were brewing beer at home, so they got a brew supply place. The next thing you know, the brew supply was that kind of turned into a brewery. So uh, just just real quick, it's an imperial porter. It's masterfully blended with uh, aquacate coffee from the Nejero region in Colombia and Madagascar bourbon vanilla beans. Jeez, so, sounds amazing. Yeah, definitely the time of year for dark beers. So. Yeah, we have a really dark board. If you guys are around and you're looking for some dark beers, definitely. We've got a great lineup coming up right now. Becky, how's it going? There's a couple questions coming through. I really didn't. Kind of small. What's the story behind the glassware? Good question. Go ahead. Yeah, so these uh, tulip glasses, um, traditionally you use these tulip glasses for a shorter pour. Um, and traditionally it's for Imperials. We're using these today because it's just... Uh, a little bit nicer, you can pour a little bit less beer in them and allows for a little bit more aroma than you would get out of a traditional pint glass. Um, but you can pick up these tulip glasses in pretty much any store, um, but we, uh, we hold on to these for uh, imperial, imperial glasses and, and sours for the most part. What, what are you getting here? Lots of vanilla. Oh my goodness. Coffee, yeah, right? absolutely. Definitely a dark, a dark beer for sure. Nice. A milk chocolate head on the top of it. Oh my gosh, yeah, super creamy. Mm. Oh my gosh. Silky smooth mouthfeel, oh right? Oh my gosh, yeah. That's what I love out of a porter or a stout. Super moment. creamy and got buttery and. Not super bourbon forward, right? They said the bourbon vanilla beans in here, so it's, it's a little bit there. Which honestly, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of times you find these bourbon aged beers that just so over the hey, top. Um, where bourbon just completely comes through and destroys the rest of what the beer is about. Yeah, it sort of overpowers it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, this is a good, real well balanced. You can tell it's a porter, so it's not super heavy. And it pours pretty dark, but up against the light here, you can kind of see on the edges. You can see through it. Porters are a little bit lighter than stouts. This is one of the better balanced porters I've had in a while. This is this is really really good. Yeah. Like, Oso, right? No, is this yeah. Oso? Yeah. Great job, guys. Yeah. Seriously, shout out to Oso. If you guys can get a handle on that. Uh, through Tabor or any of your other bottle shops, snag one of these little babies. Yeah. Now, I'm going to guess that this would probably age, and you could probably hold on to this bottle for some time too with the brew yeah. in it. That's a good thing about you know porters, dark beers, uh, sours. You can really kind of hold on to them. You know, sometimes these IPAs you want to sort of drink, uh, you know, right away. But some of these other ones you can cellar as long as they're at a good temperature and there's not getting a whole lot of light. You can keep them for a long, long time. So. I want to keep None drink. of our friends have showed up here, so there's still lots of beer here that we're going to have to try to consume here this morning. <laughs> I want to keep drinking this one. This one's good. Yeah, this is good. Cool. All right. Last but not least, huh? Yeah, right. And then the uh, hat there. You want to grab that? Yeah, for sure. So, we got a local beer. Lost beer. Our friends at Block 15... Actually, a buddy of ours hooked us up with this. Um, Shout out to Slack. Thanks for he, that, buddy. He, he went to uh, the release event and picked up the Dab Lab series that they just released, um, which uh, Chris will tell you a little bit more about here. Let me crack this beast open. And yeah, so what, this is a uh, Block 15. It's called Joint Juice IPA. It's, just, it's, a, it's a Dab Lab series. So what they're doing is they're extracting um, – hops with co2 which makes an oil so they're including that they also have a lupulin powder which is kind of like cop like hop keef if you know if you know anything about that uh basically uh, there's these little crystals on on the hop itself and uh 
that's what they're they're collecting they're adding that to it, it has a really big hot flavor to it um, like I said this is a oh, this wow. is called a juice joint IPA Let's see what else can I tell you about it oh it's a uh, it's got some citrus in it citra uh, mosaic Apollo let's just drink it yeah super citra picked up this killer hat too yeah. uh, you guys need to stop down there before these get get gone they've got two places over in Corvallis there these are killing every IPA they've done I'm I mean, every beer that they've done like has really killed it. So, if you haven't had any Block 15 beers out of Corvallis, I know they're distributing themselves around here. So, pick some up. You'll love it. For sure. This is what's uh, up, Jennifer. This is up our alley. S Citra, like oh my gosh. over <laughs> overload. This is, this is so. It smells so delightful. Oh, the IPA Super drinkers sweet. be jealous about this one. This one's uh, I without even tasting it. Hazy, right? Super hazy, yeah, nice filtered. creamy head to it. Yep. Looks like it has a pretty silky mouth feel to it. Which is kind of viscosity, oh, right? Wow. The thickness. Super juicy. Like orange juice. Oh yeah. This is like yeah. orange so juice. So I'm I'm guessing that they have a little So Great Notions, another great brewery out of Portland. Uh, Derek and I are both big, big fans of them. Um, I know that Block 15 and them have done a couple beers in the past. Um, this hazy beer thing, this new hazy IPA thing, it seems to be kind of unfiltered. The new trend, which I kind of like because, you know, they're filtering out, and this has got all these little bits have got good flavor in them. Yeah. So, uh, dude, this Absolutely. is amazing. This I, is amazing. Yeah, you know, to talk about filtered beer just for a minute, when you talk to a brewer, everybody has their opinion of filtered beer. But when they started, Michelle, when, they started when they started filter, filtering beer, it's really just because the customer wanted to see a clear beer. That's yes, it. they do, Jordan. Um, and I'll get to that in these second. unfiltered beers really give them a lot more complexity, and I think, uh, and, and, and a mouthfeel completely different than you do in like a, a filtered beer. So absolutely delightful. So some of you are, are asking the question about whether or not this beer is going to be here. Yes, uh, I have a keg of it in my cooler currently. Uh, now, now we have a Mug Club member uh, membership here. Some of you guys know that, uh, and this beer will be offered as a Mug Club member for the first week that it's on. But they've never drank all of it, so there should be plenty left for the public. But it should be going on anytime soon. And uh, that's one thing that when we decided to do this show, uh, we didn't want to we want we didn't want to feel like we were trying to push all these beers and we're trying to sell all these things. Um, so most of these beers we can't we. Can't, we can't sell because we can't get a hold a hold of them. But there's always going to be one of them that we're going to be selling, so you can count on one of them being being here. So yes, to answer that question, we will be having this beer, and I'm excited about it because I want to drink more of it. So speaking of the lineup, we got a crazy good lineup coming up. We have some beers that we've never carried before that'll be coming through here in the next couple of weeks. So if you yeah, made it in. Definitely. Yeah, we've been. You know, Derek and I both do a lot of work on Instagram and Facebook and emailing these breweries and developing relationships. Uh, we just have a new. We have a new distributor coming in, so picking up four brand new breweries that we're really excited about. A sour house out of Portland, Cascade Sour. Um, we're going to finally be getting some of their stuff. Yeah. Um, we have a bottle cooler here now. If you guys haven't checked that out, we've got some really exclusive things here. Um, so. Yeah, uh, all these beers are amazing, uh, every different kind. Um, I, I want to ask you guys, if you're listening in or if you catch the replay, please, like I said, like us, share us. Uh, those little hearts are awesome. Um, we'll definitely be going back and looking at all these uh, you know, comments and things because this is For our sure. first time around. So if you guys know and you want something, reach uh, out. Yeah, reach out and let us know your ideas and we can kind of – you know, morph things a little bit into what you yeah. guys are looking for. We want to develop some value here, um, so you guys have a little bit more knowledge. Also, yeah, um, I mean, and, and we're we're trying we plan on doing this every Saturday. So tune in every ten thirty and every Saturday. We'll be here to share some beers. The plan is to thanks for love, guys. The plan is to document these and uh, start a YouTube channel as well called Beer About It. Um, so you guys can go back and watch some previous episodes um, and, and just follow us throughout. So that's kind of the big picture. So we appreciate you guys tuning in for sure. We got a couple more things for you before we let you go. Um, first thing is we want to talk about some beer buzz, some things that are going on around here as well as um, Portland and a couple other places. First thing we want to talk about is the Goose Island event, right? Goose Island event? Right. Uh, you can kind of see it over my brother's shoulder here. We've got some posters all around. I'll be doing some marketing or we'll be doing some marketing here on Instagram and Facebook here this week. But uh, Goose Island, uh, they're out of Chicago area. They're really big. They get the goose on them. They're kind of all over the place. Um, their IPA, they just did a big, a big push, did a big push <laughs> for that uh, just about a year ago. So 
their high end stuff is killer. Their, their sours we fell upon. Um, I've got two great sours coming the Lolita and the Madame Rose. I've got a tequila barrel aged Saison that's going to be here as well. Uh, we've got um, a double IPA called Illinois, which is a, a limited series to a whole bunch of. It's probably the best lineup we've ever had. So uh, the 21st, it's a Tuesday. We always do it on Tuesday, uh, 6 to 8 o'clock. If you guys aren't doing anything, definitely come down here. We'll have the rep here. They'll be giving out free swag. Yeah, um, come check it out for sure. Yeah. Uh, another thing going on, um, let's see, the 25th of February, I wanted to plug uh, Stormbreaker Brewing out of Portland. They're doing their third annual... Um, Getting good beers, not a bad job. It's, it's basically like a beer event matches a distillery. So there's going to be 20 breweries, 20 distilleries in one place at Stormbreaker in Portland. Hey, what's it's up, on the Wendy? 25th. Thanks for tuning in. Um, hey, you, can go, you can go and get tickets. Go to their website. I think it's like 20 bucks to get in. Uh, super cool event. Uh, something else going on, uh, April 1st is the Growler Grub Train by Sandy Am Excursion Trains, which is here out of Lebanon. Uh, we'll actually be there uh, serving some food, right? Right. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, they, they actually leave right right from here in Lebanon. They go down to Sweet Home. It's about a two-hour trip. Uh, we just did a catering gig with them not too long ago, but this is Growler Grub, so from what I understand, Wendy, there's going to be... What's up? There's gonna be uh, like 10, 10, 10 different vendors, two different food vendors. We're going to be one of those. So um, if you haven't got your tickets, uh, San Diego Excursion Trains, you can go online and check those out. Definitely grab your ticket there. It should be a great time. Uh, I love it. Uh, yeah, so that's another thing that's going on. Is that it? That's that all... it, and then the promo. So, and real quick, we don't have this written down yet, but and I know it's a long, long, long ways away. Uh, September 23rd. Take some time, grab your calendars. I'll wait. <laughs> That really grab your calendar. Yeah, you're right. So September 23rd is our brew fest. We shut the streets of Lebanon down. Uh, we did it for the first time last year. It was super awesome. We had 24 breweries. Next, this year we're pushing for at least 30, maybe 35. Uh, bands all day long. September 23rd. Um, it, it's all to raise some uh, some money for the Boys and Girls Club here in the, in the greater San, San Diego area. We raised about $11,000 last year. We're looking at doubling that this year. So definitely put that on your calendar. Hey, Sam, and, yeah, I think uh, I think that's it. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Like I said, like, share, hearts, all those things. We'll see. Check out the replay, um, and uh, any anything else like comment wise, what you want to see, what you'd like to see us, uh, you know, look at, taste, uh, share. Let us know. Uh, before we go, if you watch this today and you're hearing this now, mention this uh, oh, right. mention this Dab Lab beer that we got from Block Fifteen. We'll give you $2 off a growler fill if you come in today and mention that you watch this feed. So uh, Block 15's Dab Lab, just walk up to whoever's working that day. Juice Joint. Juice Joint is the name of the beer, which is killer, by the way. Yeah. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it. We'll see you next Saturday, right, 1030? Right. Have, right. A, have a good weekend. Have a good one. Thanks.